Okay. Um, so recording this meeting. All right, well, good. Let me make this bigger. Cool. So um, what I want to do is talk about radical expressions. And a lot of people struggle with radical expressions. Um, first and foremost, first and foremost, I want you all to look at what we call the perfect squares and the perfect triples. You should know these. For perfect squares, you should know, you know, at least uh, at least up to 10 to 12. You should know up to 13. For perfect triples, you should at least know up to like five to the third. So what these mean are, you know, two to the second power is four. Four is a perfect square. Three squared is nine. Nine is a perfect square. Four squared is 16. 16 is a perfect square. Perfect triples. Two to the third is eight. Eight is a perfect triple. And so on and so forth. Why are these important? Because if I know them, I'm going to start at this one because one is always the easiest. If I know them, I know that four is a perfect square. Then when I go into a radical, so um, let me let me backtrack for a second before I do these. Your general um, representation of a radical expression. So you have the following. This is a general expression. You have the radicand. You have the radical sign, which is this, the radical sign. That's what we call it. Um, and then what we call the index. This is the index. This little number inside the radical sign is called, like in this little tick part of the radical sign is called the index. When there's no number written there, it's automatically a square root, which is what you guys are used to seeing because you've seen square roots in your past. If there is a number written there, then it changes things. Well, we call it a square root because when we have a square root, so the index here would be a two. The only type of radical situation where there is no index written, it's a square root. Well, what we say is, or what we think is, if we have a square root of a number, we're thinking what number multiplied by itself creates this? Four is a perfect square. I know that two times two is four. So if I go, what is the square root of four? Well, that's equal to two. So I need to understand and know my perfect squares to be able to do square roots. For example, five times five or five squared is 25. So if I ask for the square root of 25, I know that five times five is 25. So the square root of 25 is five. There's another way of looking at this as well. Um, if you like it this way, if I want a square root of 49, this index is two. So I'm going to try to represent the number inside with an exponent of two. And I can because 49 is a perfect square. Seven squared is 49. So I'm not changing the expression. But the reason that I write it this way is that if you want to think of it this way, the square root will cancel with the second power. And that'll help you simplify into seven. Or you could just know 49 is a perfect square and the square root of 49 is seven because seven times seven is 49. If you want to look at it this way, the square root of 81, I want to determine what that is. So I'm going to write 81 as a number to the second power so that the exponent matches the index, which allows me to simplify. One more, 121, the square root of 121. I know 11 squared is 121. And then when this exponent matches the index, I simplify just into the base 11. The reason that um, the reason that I wanted to show that is because when I get into perfect triples, which are not difficult. So for example, if I want now what we call the cubed root of eight. So now an index is written. It's not a square root, it's a cubed root. So I have to change the way that I approach this. I am no longer thinking what number times itself gives me eight. I'm no longer thinking of perfect squares. I have to think of perfect triples because of the cube root. The index is three. If you want to, you could represent eight as two to the third power and follow the same idea here. If the exponent matches the index, you could think of them as canceling each other out and simplifying just into the base, two. Um, let me do one more. 
if I want the cubed root, there's a three there, of 216, this is a, this is a cubed root because the index is three. So I want to rewrite 216, 216 as a number to the third power. I want the exponent on this number to match the index. And if it does, then I can simplify into just the base number. Why am I showing it this way? When you get into um, more complicated situations, uh, which I'll start with just variables first. Like, um, so here, let's say that I want the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared, <clears throat> what is that equal to? You could follow the same approach that we did here. So the index is a two because there's no written, uh, there's no index written, therefore it's automatically a two. If the exponent on the variable or on anything matches the index written, then you can think of them as canceling each other out and it e equals the base. Now there's a little bit more detail in this, you know, technically it's the absolute value of X, but that's a whole nother thing that maybe we'll talk about later. We'll just forget about that for, uh, for now. All variables are positive, okay, in, in, this, in these examples. Um, so if I want Y to the third, and I want the cubed root of y to the third. If the exponent matches, right? If the exponent matches the index, it just simplifies into the base. I mean, uh, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. I want the fourth root. The index is a four. So I want all my exponents to be fours or multiples of four. So I'm gonna simplify this. You could think of this as canceling with this and it's equal to x and this canceling with this equal to y, and this is equal to x, y. Um, <clears throat> yeah, obviously we'll get more complicated, but oh, let me do one more, one more easy. x squared, y squared, z squared, square root. So the index is two. So I want all these exponents to be two so I can basically cancel, and this is equal to x, y, z. Now, is it always gonna be the perfect situation where the exponents match? Of course not. Let's start with variables. Let's say that I want the square root of x to the fourth. Now, there's another way of writing this. There's a couple ways that you could approach this. Um, one method that I'm gonna show you is if you have, so here's a general representation. Let's say a to the m. So I have the nth root of a to the m. There is another way of representing this as what we call a rational exponent. And rational exponents create radical expressions and vice versa. Rational meaning fraction. So this converts, this can convert into a fraction exponent. The base is a, the numerator is the exponent on that base and the denominator of the exponent is always the index. Oops. So this simplifier, this can be rewritten as a to the m over n. This, um, let me change my color. This n is always the index, right? If I'm writing a rational exponent or I have an exponent that is a fraction, the denominator of the fraction in the exponent is the index in the radical form. These are the same expression, two ways of representing the same thing. And why did I show you that? Because if I have a situation like this, I could rewrite it as x to the four over the index is two. The denominator of the exponent is always the index of the radical, which allows me to divide, I mean, that simplifies. Four divided by two is x squared. Now you could do this in your head. You can say four divided by two is two. So this simplifies to x squared. I'll show you another one. Um, let's do the cubed root of y to the ninth. I'm gonna rewrite it. y to the nine over three. The denominator of the exponent is the same as the radical in radical form, of the index in radical form. So this simplifies into y to the third. Why? So nine divided by three is three. I'm gonna do it without showing this step. z to the square root of z to the 16 is equal to z to the 16 divided by two is eight. One more. X to the 15th 
cube root is equal to x to the 15 divided by 3 is 5. Um, let's do a fourth root of x to the fourth, y to the 12th, and z to the 20th is equal to x to the 4 divided by 4 is 1, or they cancel each other out, one exponent. y, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and z, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Okay, so this is, um, you know, this is really basic kind of uh, rational stuff. And um, so we have, again, a radical expression, which is this. This is my radical expression, which corresponds to these perfect squares, perfect triples, perfect fours, um, but can also be represented as a rational exponent. I could go back and forth between radical form and rational exponent form. So again, if I have a fraction in the exponent, the denominator of the fraction in the exponent matches the index if it's in radical form. These are the same expressions, but different representations, but they are exactly the same. Okay, so I'll do more complicated stuff in the next video.